It's bad enough snapping anybody on the ear in church, but I will not have you doing it to potential clients. <laughs> it was only because of the fire engines that Pruitt didn't notice you. Why, if he found out you worked for me, I never would have gotten any of his business. Is this salty enough? I don't care about salt. Oh, George, you do too. You're very finicky about salt. Well, you taste it, Missy. Because it's not up to my usual. Will you please stop changing the subject? Now, you've jeopardized my relationship with a client and put me in the humiliating position of having turned in a false alarm all in one day. And remember what the fire chief said, George? What was that? You have to get those newspapers out of the garage. I'll get them out, but can we please confine this to what Hazel did? All I did was to show Harold how to do the place kick. This is a residential area, not a playground. Ain't he a whiz? What? <laughs> For years, people have been complaining because there was no playground in the neighborhood. But you're the first person that ever decided to do anything about it. Do anything about what? The playground. With you carrying the ball, we'll have it done in no time. What do you think we ought to do first? What are you talking about? The playground. We got a botanical garden just a couple of blocks away from here, but what good does that do the kids? Nobody ever goes there anyway. Can't we turn that into a playground? Hazel, you just can't turn that into a playground. Well, not all of it, just half of it. We could get some shovels and go over there and dig up all them stick plants. Hazel, that <laughs> property belongs to the taxpayers of the city. Well, we're taxpayers, you and me. Of course, I hardly rate with the salary you pay me. We're taxpayers. That property is under the jurisdiction of the Department of Parks, and they're the only ones that can change it. Well, maybe I ought to go down and talk to them. Hazel, it's not that easy. It certainly isn't. That park commissioner is a hard-boiled executive. Oh, yeah? Maybe I ought to wear my flowered print. You know the one I mean? <laughs> one that sets off my figures? <laughs> Fabulous. Even my cod liver oil tastes good. And for the first time in my married life, I'm off those starvation portions. What's for breakfast? Your favorite. Blueberry pancakes. I guess that's enough to start with. We'll have our coffee now. Get Mr. B to give me a contract. I wanted to tell you what Mr. Griffin said. Mr. Griffin said this and that, and this and that, and this and that. works for Mr. Griffin now. Yeah, but this is their day up, and she promised to take me for a ride in her chariot. Chariot? What chariot? It's well known that Mr. Griffin bought her. Dorothy, what's for dinner? My usual, apricot whip. 
Oh, no. Since Hazel left, we've had nothing but apricot whip every day for breakfast, lunch, dinner. Well, I'm sorry, darling. It's the only thing I know how to make. If I don't get a decent meal soon, I'll waste away to nothing. Me, too. Dad, will you play catch with me the way Hazel used to? Oh, I'm sorry, son. I'm just too weak. Would you like me to play with you, Harold? I don't think so. You throw like a girl. Hey, here she comes! <laughs> Swell chariot. Hi, Mr. B. How about going for a spin? If it's the last thing I do, I'm going to talk Hazel into signing a contract. Say something. <laughs> More coffee, anybody? Hmm. Does that mean yes or no? Uh, yes, please. George? Mm hmm? Did you sleep all right last night? Oh, I'm sorry, Dorothy. What'd you say? I was just wondering if you rested well last night. Are you kidding? After 27 holes of golf, I died. Died? Oh, Hazel, what I mean is that when my head hit that pillow, I was dead to the world and everything in it. That far gone, huh? Wild horses could have raced through that bedroom and I would have never heard them. Oh, that's just perfect. And what's more, Hazel, I feel terrific this morning. And when a man feels this good, there's no problem too big to conquer. Oh, that's the way I like to hear you talk, Mr. B. Then maybe you figured out a way we could remodel the kitchen. I didn't mean that. In case you didn't get the message before, I solved that little problem Saturday. Oh, but I thought maybe you'd change your mind. Man has as much right to change his mind as a woman does, George. I haven't changed my mind. And I've seen kitchens a lot worse than ours. You have? Where? Uh, Hazel, when I... When I think of the wonderful meals my grandmother used to prepare on a wood-burning stove, and the only running water she had is what she pumped from the well. What did she do with the garbage? Fed it to the pigs. Well, since our disposal is on the blink, Maybe we ought to get pigs, too. All right. Hazel, I'll call the plumber and have him fix the disposal this morning. But that is all. That's what I was afraid of, Missy. He was too far gone last night. We never got to him. Hi, George. You finished checking that Jameson land option yet? On the last page now. Sit down, Harry. Mm. E-I-E-I-O. Well, I just thought I'd join in. You were humming. You... Oh. Uh -huh. Was I? Uh, this is okay with me, Harry. I told James not to worry about a thing. We fix it up just the way he wanted it. It's obviously the only sensible thing to do. I don't know why I was against it. Against Jameson buying more land? Harry. Uh, how much do you think it would cost? About $400 an acre. No, oh, no, I'm not talking about that. You see, Dorothy and Hazel want to redo the kitchen. 
Uh, I'd seen good service and, well, when you start fixing this and start fixing that, well, you finally reach the point of no return. You understand what I mean? No. <laughs> well, uh, Harry, it, it's like constantly repairing an old car. There's no point in doing that if it's more economical to buy a new one. Right. You're right, George. Yeah, but where do I begin? Well, I can introduce you to an automobile dealer who'll give you the best offer in town. <laughs> Harry, I'm talking about my kitchen. Well, I thought you were talking about your car. No, I'm talking about my kitchen. I'm a pretty good repairman, but I'm not quite up to repairing a whole kitchen. Well, what you need is a contractor, George. I know just the man for you. And so, uh, congratulations, uh, Judge. Well, I haven't even been appointed yet. Where did you hear that? Well, Hazel, I saw her down the street about a half an hour ago. Have you told anybody else? Well, no, sir, Mr. Baxter. Well, good. Please don't, Barney, because it's very important. Well, anything you say, Mr. Baxter, I won't say anything. Goodbye. Uh, thank you. Dorothy. Dorothy? Yes, darling? Hazel has told Barney I'm already a judge. Oh, no. Oh, yes. That woman has a genius for causing trouble. Hello? <laughs> Hello, Carl, you old bandit. How's... Where did you hear that? Well, where did your maid hear it? Well, Hazel has no right to repeat such a story because it's absolutely not true. Uh, Carl, please, will you not repeat it to a soul? Thank you. Carl Fletcher? Yes. Well, he won't repeat it, George. She's probably told everybody in the neighborhood. And, and one person outside the family is too many. Mr. Baxter? Yes, sir? My name's Frank Olson. I'm a reporter on the Sentinel. Oh, no. My editor sent me over here to check on a rumor that you've been appointed to the municipal... Uh, no, look, 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 please, please. There's absolutely no truth to the rumor. None whatsoever. I'm sorry. Good day. Thank you, Mr. Baxter. Well, that settles it. What are you going to do, George? I'm going to call Judge Winters and have him withdraw my name. Oh, darling, no. I have no choice. And when Hazel gets back, I'm going to give her a talking to she'll never forget. I may even fire her. I know you're angry with her, George, but she just made the mistake because she's so proud of you. Dorothy, she's repeated family affairs outside the family Hello? and... I'm home. There she is. And for once, I'm going to talk to her before I cool down. Uh, George. George. Now, don't do anything hasty. If there was ever a time that called for hasty action, this is it, and I don't want you interfering. Hazel? Oh, for Pete's sake, Mr. B. You didn't have to come out here. I was going in there. I don't mind the walk, open Hazel. It. What's this? Isn't that just like a man? Go on, open it. It's a gavel. Oh, for Pete's sake. Now, before you start thanking me, I want to say something. Hazel, just a minute. You know how I feel about Missy here. And little Harold, when he gets a good report card, I go all over town bragging about it. <laughs> I'm awful. Hazel, please, I want to talk to you. But it ain't so easy for me to let you know how I feel about you, Mr. B. Because you got your little peculiarities, and maybe I got some, too. But I love you, Mr. B. Just like you was a kid brother or something. So I've been going all over town bragging about you being a judge. You like the gavel? Yeah, yes, Hazel. It's, it's a beauty. I'll show you how to use it. You know, you don't bang it. You just give it little taps like that. Oh, I'll tell you something funny. <laughs> Once I was presiding at a meeting of the Sunshine Girls, you know, and I didn't have any gavel, so I was using a croquet mallet. <laughs> and a couple of the girls got in an argument. <laughs> and I was banging for order, and I knocked a leap out of the dining room table. <laughs> Ain't that a juicy? You ain't thank me. Oh, I do thank you, Hazel, but I have to tell you something. I, I'm not going to be a judge. I'm going to call Judge Winters and tell him that I, uh, I can't accept the appointment. Oh, for Pete's sake. Why not? Because, uh, because I'm not in a position right now financially. Uh, still a mortgage on the house, and uh, I have Harold's college fund to think about. Oh. 
Oh, no, no, you keep it. You'll be a judge still someday. You might even get on the Supreme Court. Thank you, Hazel. You know, I, uh, I think I'll keep that on my desk. It's a good luck piece. Governor McGuire, this is Hazel. How do you do? Miss Hazel Burke. Hazel, this is a real pleasure. How do you do, oh, Governor? Uh, uh, Hazel, would you uh, take our hats? Oh, oh Mrs. Sure. McGuire, shall we go upstairs? Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. What a lovely home. Must keep you busy, Hazel. Oh, yes, Governor McGuire. <laughs> I hope you don't uh, have a crowd like this to feed every day. Oh, no, no, Governor McGuire. I'm sure you prepared a wonderful luncheon for us. Well, well, uh, maybe. <laughs> Governor, shall we go into the living room? Mr. B, you see that? I shot my whole water conversation in 20 seconds. What do I do now? <laughs> well, why don't you just put the hatch away and serve the order? <laughs> I really appreciate being brought into your home, Mr. Baxter. So much warmer than the formality of a hotel. Well, it's a privilege to have you here, Governor. Oh, thank you, Hazel. I'll have another one of these cheese and bacon things. I hope they're not fattening. No, Governor McGuire. Did you make them yourself? Uh, yes, uh, Governor McGuire. <laughs> they're really wonderful. Well, maybe. <laughs> woman a few words, isn't she? Oh, yes, <laughs> she is at times. Uh, fortunately, this is one of those times. What in the world is that? Someone seems to want me. Uh, don't bother, sir. All right, Tom. Uh, Tom's supposed to be my personal secretary, but he also acts as nursemaid. <laughs> I'll see what it is. <laughs> well, for Pete's sake. We want the governor. 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 Now, close the door, Mrs. Baxter. By all means. Who's out there? Pickets. We want the governor. We want the governor. We want the governor. We want the governor. Nothing to concern yourself about, sir. Just ignore them. What group is it this time? Conservatives who think I'm too radical or radicals who think I'm too conservative? And apparently some college students looking for excitement. Did, did you say college students? Yes, usual campus nonconformists. But I don't understand how they knew the governor was here. Excuse me a moment, sir. <laughs> Hazel, I'd like to speak to you for a minute. Yeah, I figured you would. <laughs> Naturally, you know why I brought you out here. Sure, you're going to ask me a question, I'm going to answer it, and you ain't going to believe me. Go ahead. Are you responsible for those kids outside? No, I ain't. Hazel, I don't believe you. That's what I figured. You must have had something to do with this. Well, I told Jim in March that the governor was going to be here, but I was only bragging. But, Mr. B, why are you so against them poor married kids finding a good place to live? Hazel, I am not against that at all. I'm only against having the governor annoyed while he's a guest in my house. Now, will you come and announce lunch is ready? Ladies and gentlemen, luncheon is served. <laughs> 